Hey guys, Tyler up here, and today we're taking a look at the new patch for Company Furious 3, 1.3.0, codenamed Umber Wasp. In this particular video, we'll be looking at general changes, US Forces and Wehrmacht, the most important changes across the board, and then we'll have a look at Africa Corps and Brits tomorrow. Having a look at the new 4v4 map, Seuss Wetlands, and straight away I have to say, great looking map. So let's have a look around, you can see we've got these like low wetland areas come up to this big kind of fortified area with big walls and it looks like maybe you'll be able to put like machine guns in these windows or something but that is not the case I have tried to make use of it maybe it's a little bit misleading from the default camera angle because you kind of got these buildings built into the back of the walls that makes it look like maybe you could actually jump a machine gun into there but not the case but yeah I will say that I feel this lighting setting is kind of where Company Furious 3 shines uh you know just I think this is a really suitable lighting to make Company Furious 3 look good. So maybe they'll use it in a few more settings. And uh, kind of reminiscent this overall of the uh, Oasis Depot map that won Grey Shots 4v4 uh, map competition. Be it inside the city area, or big walled city, kind of a little bit ruined. But a lot of garrisons up here, loads and loads of garrisons. So you're going to need to bring your mortars and flamers if you're fighting in the north. Also, I did check uh, all the water on this map that I tested. You can drive through even this kind of deep looking water. So don't worry about not being able to pass through it or whatever. Everything, even, even if it looks quite deep, you can uh, drive through. See, coming down... Uh, Big walled areas here. I don't know if this will see much play up here. There's not really any objectives up there, but looking good. Big uh, pathway through here. And then coming into the center of the map, much more open, big roads, lots of channels to path through. Could have some massive tank clashes in here. The uh, central road is elevated, as you can see there. So firing you know, indirect fire shots over the top of this will be quite good, but da direct tank battles, probably going to be a few shots connecting into the ground and yeah you can pass through all these areas as well all these water areas they are quite open through the center of the map overall and then to the southern area also reasonably open maybe a, a little bit of elevation here and there a few buildings not quite so many and again you can pass through all this water down here as well And a big medium fuel down the bottom here. And there's also a uh, medium or high munitions down the bottom here. So quite a lot of resources to fight over in this bottom corner. Even though it's quite open. So yeah, it looks uh, really good. As I said, I think this lighting setting makes Co3 really shine. And uh, hopefully this is a fun map. Pretty similar overall in size to uh, Mignano Gap. But more direct paths to fight towards the enemy. So it should feel smaller. Maybe the bases are slightly closer together as well. Having a look at the stats of Seuss Wetlands, in terms of size, going from corner to corner, it's almost identical to Mignano Gap. The amount of resources is pretty standard as well, having 5 fuel per minute more than Mignano Gap and Winter Line, but standard amount of munitions and strategic points. And for the distribution of resource points, you'll see a lot of medium and high munitions through the centre of the map, which will be hotly contested, a medium fuel in the bottom corner to try and encourage some fighting down there, and a good layer of strategic points which could allow for some cutoffs. They also mention in the developer stream that when they make a new map, such as Seuss Wetlands, it will have an offering rate bonus for the first couple weeks after it gets released. So they said it was roughly 40% higher chance to be matched on Seuss Wetlands than other maps for the first couple weeks after it comes out. So it's a good change, you know, you don't have to spam quite so many games to get to grips get to try out the new map a lot more often in the days after the patch. Now we're having a look at Pacino Stalemate, the 1v1 map which had a redesign this patch. So the most immediate thing you can notice is it's a change of setting. It's now during the evening instead of during the daytime. The big change though is the strategic points. You used to have zero strategic points on this map. Now you've got two on each side, four in total which could cause Africa Corps in the past to struggle on this map because they are quite manpower dependent. So not having these boosted manpower points, yeah, was a bad map for Africa Corps because of that. Now it's kind of brought up to spec. 
the rest of the resources unchanged except for now both high munitions are in this corner. It used to be like one player would have like a high muni on each side that was kind of a bit more favored towards them. But now both high munitions up on this side, both medium munitions down here. But the total amount of other resources are unchanged. So yeah, let's have a look. Uh, we'll start down in the bottom here. You can see uh, this area used to kind of be like shrubbed off. You used to have a bunch of trees here. Now it's got this heavy cover fortification overlooking this area and just generally open this up a bit. I think there used to be maybe some more light cover craters in this area. This has had a uh, redesign. Now I've got a bunch of walls up here. Generally a little bit more opened up as well. I think these trees used to be a little bit more restrictive in terms of vision. You can see that this has actually been opened. Now it used to be a high wall all the way around. Now it's been kind of pre-destroyed in this area. So that'll open up a new channel for infantry to get through, I imagine. Actually haven't tested that. Put us to work. Yep, they can vault over that. So it opens that up. Uh, okay, maybe a little bit more compacted in the middle of the map. Uh, also, one thing, that they've opened up more windows on these uh, these on buildings down. here. I think a lot of these top Wait floor below. windows used to be destroyed, so you couldn't jump in them. But now a few more of the windows are undestroyed, so they'll be stronger to put your squad inside with. So that was an, another change, and this area is... Kind of, uh, had been flattened out a bit. This tree line reduced quite a lot. Added some new heavy cover. Maybe got rid of the, I think there's a truck around here and decreased this walled area overall. Pretty standard around the side here. But yeah, big redesign over here on this high munitions. Massive amount of craters removed here. Big heavy cover walls added each side. And also this building what now, you can no longer garrison it. it. Pretty really similar through here, maybe a couple of haystacks removed in this area. This building's been moved back a touch. Yeah, that's a look at the rework Pacino stalemate. There are quite a few other map changes here and there, smaller changes, which I'm not going to be covering in this video. But yeah, good to see a lot of improvements to the map pool. Road preference has been removed from long range pathfinding. I did the before and after on Pacino stalemate because this was one of the worst maps in my opinion, worst defenders. Like quite often you try and give long range movement orders, quite safe stuff where you think you just drive along here, but instead you would drive through the center of the map, often your opponent would have like double AT guns there, your tank would drive into the middle and die. So yeah, here's the demonstration, just before and after, I'm going to click roughly here. So before, you go all the way around here through the center of the map, come down to here, now you just drive straight here. Straight line, simple, simple. If you want to drive down the roads, get a bit of a move speed bonus, you can. You can manually do that. You can queue up some commands to shift or whatever. That's fine. But the game's not going to do it for you and have your tank drive through unpredictable channels. Here we have the old movement system. And the issue with it was when you gave a movement command that was further than 40 range away with a vehicle, that movement command would be translated imprecisely. So what this meant for longer range vehicles, such as the Stummel, which has 45 range, if you gave an attack command to a unit which was slightly out of range, maybe around 55 range away, like these riflemen are, even though the riflemen are directly ahead of the Stummel, first it turns to the side, then starts driving forwards, then does a bit of an S movement before finally lining up and shooting at the riflemen. This made these longer range units horrible to play with. Now recreating that test scenario, but with the current movement system, you know, slightly beyond 10 range away, pointing right towards the rifleman, I'm going to right click on them. So you can see it kind of wanted to go off to the side, based on that movement, but it just crawled straight ahead and started firing. So it's going to make these kind of units, like the Stummel, anything longer than 40 range, just night and day, way, way, way better to use, which is huge. But even like shorter range units, 40 range and below, you know, if you're trying to target units that are slightly beyond your maximum range, this is going to make your vehicles so much more responsive. This is a massive change. Now, having a look at a few of the user interface changes, and you can see down the bottom right, we have this new segment, which scrolls through three different news segments. But 
for any like detail changes, you still have to visit on website and this opens up a web browser. So you're not gonna get super detailed stuff in game, but that's fine because it's probably better to read it on a web browser than in game anyway. When you quit out of a match, you'll now actually see the in game stats, which is good. And apparently they've made some changes here to make these in game stats more accurate and uh, more useful. So that's really nice. They've made changes to the ping system, changes in appearance. See now they've got these like pillars of light coming up, which they didn't used to have. They used to have maybe like a little bit of flowing out around the point instead. I think I mildly preferred the style before this, but it's not a big deal for me. But they also changed uh, ping spam, so you can't do that anymore. If you give a ping of the same type, it'll remove your previous ping. So there are three types of ping, which is on deep by default control E to control T. But yeah, if you try and place the same one down again, it'll remove your previous one. And I think these, you know, they do have different meanings. Like one is attack, defend, and question. <laughs> but personally, I always just do control R. Uh, but yeah, if you try and spam pings heaps, then it'll like time you out and you can't, and it'll keep giving you an increased timer where you can't uh, do any pings anymore. So yeah, they're limiting ping spam reducing some of that grief potential in team games. They've also reduced the icon size on the tactical map, made them quite a lot smaller, which is good overall because it was just too cluttered. Even on 1v1s, you know, your units would be overlapping each other too much because the icons were so large. So now it should make this much more usable, maybe even into the team game modes, having these icons be smaller. They did remove some functionality here though. You can see uh, they used to have like a white dot underneath a squad of infantry to show exactly where its position was and then the icon would be you know on top of that so you could see the precise positioning on that which is not too bad i didn't really use it for infantry but you also had it for vehicles which would show you like a little box with like a arrow kind of pointing showing you which way the vehicle was facing and even though i personally didn't really pay much attention to that i think over time that's something i probably would have learned to notice during my tactical map play and that is now gone so yeah you know removing it from infantry i don't really mind too much but removing it from vehicles i think probably making things worse overall some other things with tactical map have not been addressed unfortunately you can see that enemy units still go on top of your units so you see this so it makes it really hard to see or control your own units because units from this spawn always on the top of the tactical map, units on this spawn always on the bottom. Whereas, you know, when it comes to keeping your squads alive, you always want your own units to be on the top so you know when to retreat them. And it's just so easy to lose a unit because of this issue. On top of that, uh, you know, these kind of indicators, prioritize vehicles, hold fire, repair, these still also appear on the tactical map they haven't remove these yet so they kind of clutter things up and then they also see that they change the position of the icon of the vehicle even though it's not moved at all it kind of throws you off as to where the vehicle actually is so yeah they need to address this and just remove this because it's just too much clutter for the and too much detail for the tactical map another great change they made to the ui if you focus your attention down here Used to be all caps everywhere, now it's upper and lowercase lettering, including my name, shown as it is in Steam, rather than all capitalized. Uh, then, on top of that, enhanced descriptions. Sprint, plus 80% speed. Ready for deployment, Pour sir. it on them. Pour it on bonuses right there. Same story, here. tactical assault. Combined arms. So now we've got numerical bomb. descriptions. I'm running low on smokes and shot. Uh, same for commander abilities or battle group abilities also have numerical descriptions of exactly what they do this is excellent man this is so good especially because in company of heroes 3 at the moment we can't look these bonuses up in the mod tools they're all hidden behind these state trees so us we're ignorant to this stuff previous to this you know you could take a guess here or there roughly what they were but yeah we didn't know what these bonuses were now we can see them they're down here so that is really welcome. Great change.
very happy about Say that. Words, and that's Relic taking on more work because you know every time they do one of these patches, they're going to have to have update all these numbers, especially you know, like for a whole bunch of foreign languages and stuff as well. Hopefully they've got it for your language. Uh, I could be mistaken about that. One thing they could do is uh, change veterancy as well. Get numerical numbers in here for veterancy. That would be the next step. But yeah, great changes to the UI. On to the balance changes now, and they made a bunch of changes to a variety of vehicle weapons. Basically, they said that long range accuracy was a little bit too high, and especially after the recent fix to projectiles that will make them collide with the ground less often, they were just too accurate in the long range. I looked through a few of these, and yeah, the, the changes seem to be quite minor overall, so not a huge change here. But if you ever want to compare this kind of stuff yourself before and after the patch, come to co3stats.com. Then come to the Explorer DPS unit comparison. Then you can change the patch version. So we'll go back to the previous patch, 1.25. Say so we'll type in 75 millimeter half track for both sides. And if you hover over this, you can see the accuracy. And in this particular case, only the mid range changed. You see here it's 0 0.0563 mid accuracy before the change over to here, 0 0.055. So a tiny bit of mid accuracy lost from the 75 mil half track. So yeah, as I said, these accuracy changes are not that big. And if you ever want to check before and after patch changes, code3stats.com, the way to go. They have made a lot of changes to anti-air. First off, they've standardized the damage that all of these different anti-air weapons will do to planes. So across all factions, they'll be doing roughly the same amount, be shooting down planes roughly as quickly as each other, which is good because it can be pretty difficult to balance that kind of stuff since these guys have like vastly different rates of fire and damage profiles. So that's nice. On top of that, they've changed the durability of airstrikes to make various ones harder to shoot down than others. So strafing runs such as the ASC P-47, or the Luftwaffe ones, the ones you get early on, single pass planes, they're the easiest to shoot down. Then dive bombs are the next easiest. Loiters are mid strength to shoot down. Recon versions are harder to shoot down than the damage dealing versions in general. And then finally, heavy bombing runs like carpet bombing, break through incendiary bombing runs, these are the hardest to shoot down. First anti air test, we've got a squad roughly in the middle of the map here anti air a little bit further behind and we're going to call in the easiest type of strafe to shoot down coming from our base position see how it gets on okay so we maybe need to adjust the sound effects there but did indeed shoot it down before it got in range and you can notice if we see this again the anti air piece starts shooting at the plane before it even appears on the map that's one of the changes they made that these anti-air weapons can start shooting at the planes before you can even see them on the map. So that, you know, effectively increases their range, especially on these uh, 1v1 maps. The second stage of plane durability, the dive bomb style, we'll do a similar test in the center of the map, pulling it in. Got a whirlwind out the back there for anti-air. So a little bit too late this time around. Doesn't get shot down in time to prevent the bombs from unloading. We'll try this a little bit further away. I did notice the planes came in from this side instead of from our base, which was maybe a little bit unexpected. Do a P-47 a little bit further back, so the plane has to fly a bit further before unloading its bomb. Okay, so... Still managed to get the bomb off, even though it got shot down quite early on. It must release its bomb quite early in the stage. We'll try it right out the back here. See if this works. Okay, yeah. So, this time, the bombs did not get a chance to unload. All right. So yeah, second stage of durability, the dive bomb, harder for an isolated piece of anti-air to shoot down, at least when they're VET zero. I don't think there are any things that give you dedicated increases to anti-air, but the anti-air performance will also benefit from things like rate of fire and accuracy bonuses, I imagine. So they will get better as they VET up, and they do VET up quite quickly. Just shooting down, what was that, three planes? 
already uh, V1 in a bit. Next stage of anti-air testing, we've got a flak feeling close to the north on the 4v4 map, the winter line, pretty much as far north as you'd ever really use it. And I'm going to be bringing in a recon loiter close to the bottom of the map just to see the Our range scaling of anti-air on a 4v4 map. And you can reach it like from early on, like from about here. But it looks like when it's off the side of the map to about here, it loses tracking. So that's interesting. Can't quite reach all the way off the side of the map. It can reach pretty much the entire playing area. So, I don't know. It feels to me like to cover planes in a 4v4 situation based on this test, you would only really need two pieces of anti-air close to the center-ish, maybe, like maybe around here and around here. And that would pretty much cover everything. So maybe the range scaling on this needs to be reduced slightly for these uh, 4v4 situations. So now let's put my theory to the test. We've got two flak feelings roughly covering most of the map, I imagine, with this kind of configuration, this kind of positioning. And we're going to bring in the easiest to shoot down strafe through the center. On a unit that's dead in the center of the map. Let's see if it manages to unload its payload before being shot down. No, it does manage to get shot down before this works. They are currently facing this direction though. I'm going to change them to face this way so they don't have to turn to shoot first. All right, same strafe now, but this time these guys are facing the correct direction. They won't have to turn to shoot. Yep. And without the turning time, they get shot down before they can unload their payload. So it does give you pretty good coverage, uh, a flak in a default positioning like this. But yeah, make sure your anti-air weapon doesn't have to rotate before starting to shoot down the enemy. Make sure, in the case of the flak, you've got your flak facing the rear, the rear facing towards the enemy. And you'll be able to shoot this down. We'll go for the dive bomb next. It's hard to shoot down. I'm expecting this will not be shot down. And I was completely wrong. Wow. Try that one more time. Wow. Oh, did manage to get it off this time. So close to a 50-50, I guess, whether you'll be able to unload the dive bomb or not based on this kind of anti-air configuration. But this is, remember, VET Zero still. So as they scale up in veterancy, they'll get better and better at shooting down these types of planes. They've changed like mortar barrages. The cooldown has been reduced and the reload rate has been standardized to be the same as the US Forces mortar. So in general, this should mean faster rate of fire during mortar barrages, at least for these light mortars. But I think this maybe isn't really that fair because for me, the Wehrmacht mortar is the best at the moment because it's got the best VET one ability, the flare is so much more valuable than any of the other vet ones in my experience. So them all having the exact same rate of fire, but the Vermark Mortar Flare being by far the best vet one ability, yeah, it, it's not really fair, not super on board with this change. Let's see how these mortar changes feel in game. We've got the Vermark Mortar here against the US Forces machine gun, not quite a max range, 20 inside, pretty standard range. Gonna have sight the whole time. So the towers reduce the scatter. I mean, it doesn't feel overwhelmingly powerful or anything, but certainly feels quite good. I think one thing the devs will need to remember to do is that once they fix that bug, where that, you know, the weapon itself isn't absorbing potentially one third of the damage, and the damage is going onto the weapon crew instead, they might have to rebalance a lot of these kind of indirect fire pieces against team weapons because, yeah, they'll be quite susceptible once. The damage is actually going onto the squad members instead of the weapon itself. Variancy adjustments. There have been a huge amount of variancy adjustments throughout this patch. A few listed at the top here. Anti-tank gun vet requirements reduced across the board. Engineering units. It only mentions two factions here, but US Forces and Wehrmacht also have their engineers reduced in variancy. And rocket artillery. Especially at the top end, this is supposed to be 9,000. 
you know, it's a big reduction in the requirements to get to VET3, which is good because, yeah, it felt very hard for a lot of units to ever hit VET3 at the moment in Code 3. Sniper changes. If you exit cover, Moving. it'll take longer before you get decloaked. Four seconds of fact. And then finally decloak Just now. So it'll make it a lot easier if you're trying to sneak around and camouflage. Say if you have to like bridge a gap, getting across I from here to here. Now you can do that while staying cloaked. So the increasing the viability of snipers quite a bit. Also increasing uh, sight. Turn fog of war on. We've got an enemy out the back there. So yeah, I'll attack moving forwards. I spot them. Snipe them off. They can't shoot back. I think one of the problems with snipers still though is that when they do get spotted, they die extremely fast, even long range. Uh, I think their target size still needs to come down. It's 1.5 at the moment. Maybe down to like 1.33. I think with the changes they implemented in this patch, slight target size reduction, I think that'd be viable again. Now we're going to have a look at Breach, which got changed this patch as well. It was included in the bug fixes section, but I think it's important to pick it up the top here because it's a pretty big change. So activate Breach on the building. Notice this doesn't cost me any munitions. Kicks them out of the building, and if it does kick them out of the building, they will also have to retreat. So, you know, if you're like a low APM player, you're not paying attention to this kind of stuff, it's maybe actually a buff for you, because, you know, you're not going to have a super low health squad standing outside the door about to die. But if you're like a higher APM player, but maybe you just got caught out this time, now you don't have your squad outside, you can't use them for anything anymore. Yeah, breach, a slight buff there. Another thing I noticed during the testing for this video, if the enemy squad jumps out of the building very early on in the breach animation, roughly before the progress bar is 15% filled, the breaching squad will jump into the building rapidly. So if the breaching squad was getting fired upon by different squads, getting into the building faster like this would be a big advantage. So if you are trying to dodge the breach, wait until the progress bar is around 25% full before getting out. That way the breaching squad will still go through the lengthy animation standing at the front of the door, potentially taking more damage trying to execute the breach. Into the faction specific changes now and we're starting out with the 4x4 truck for US forces. This was extremely popular in 1v1 lately, especially in conjunction with the armoured battle group, in fact pretty much only with the immediate vet one, giving it the immediate come, capture option, made it a very strong option. So yeah, it's had its frontal armor nerfed by one, which does make a big difference when you're fighting against a lot of small arms in the early game. They'll be taking a lot more damage from this. And it's had its moving performance nerfed. The main change that will make, say if you're like chasing down another ultralight, such as like a Krad Schutzen or a Kettenkrad, now, you know, you'll essentially be doing 25% less damage in those kind of chase down scenarios. So yeah, I do think this probably did deserve a nerf, but I don't think these are the changes I would have made personally. I think I probably would have made the self-repair slower so that, you know, once it comes forward for that initial attack, does damage to a squad, backs out for repairs, then comes back in, it's out for repairs for longer during that first initial phase. That's probably the change I would have made and then see how it goes from there. But yeah, it's got nerfed, probably over nerfed. The Greyhound's main gun has been overhauled this patch. First off, in terms of AoE values, if you're landing like a really good shot right in the center, the AoE in the middle is doing less damage now. But if you land on the edge of the AoE, it'll be doing more damage. However, there's also been a damage cap added. Used to have no damage cap whatsoever. Now it's just a two model damage cap. Ooh, that's a bit scary. Especially when you're fighting against units like team weapons, where, you know, as I keep talking about, there's this potential bug where half the damage could be going to the weapon rather than the crew, I feel like this is going to make the Greyhound way worse against team weapons. Way, way worse. Especially if they're like clumped up in cover. Two damage, two model damage cap only. But it's had a scatter buff, so against units out in the open, should be landing on them more consistently, with the main gun at least. So yeah, let's have a quick test here. You know, out in the open, both of these guys have got 90 health. Let's see how long it takes to kill. Remember the uh, weapon crew models do have a 1.33 target size, so they will be taking more damage from the Greyhound's machine gun. I haven't got the uh, MG upgrade on either of these. So there we go. 
pretty consistently landing on the target, but yeah, I, I do think this is going to be a nerf on the Greyhound overall. The Scott Vet 1 ability, White Phosphorus Brass, has been nerfed. So now it costs 25 munitions and the damage it does upon impact, when it initially lands rather than the damage over time, has been massively nerfed. 80 down to 10, we'll see how it performs against this MG42 here. Still seems decent. But yeah, 25 munitions for that. All right. The Chaffee has also received some nerfs. I do think this has been overperforming a little bit. So first off, the APCR rounds got nerfed. So you need the specialized munitions upgrade to get this from the mechanized support center. And then you can go for this. The entration nerf, slight cost reduction. Didn't really see this like just about ever in uh, 1v1s. Maybe this was more of a team game issue, but the Chaffee would still scale extremely well against mediums and maybe even heavies getting onto the side and rear of them with its high mobility. So they've nerfed the penetration on the APCR rounds. Okay, but I'd say the bigger change is maybe in the head to head. Now that the Chaffee's got a slower rate of fire, longer reload, and the Simavente. A couple patches ago, these tanks used to have identical main guns, but since then, Chaffee's got a pin nerf and now a rate of fire nerf. So that should mean Simavente always wins. Let's have a look. We've got the same health. 480, 480. It's going to be a close one. Chaffee did fire slightly faster. But yeah. Simavente does come out on top. Maybe its aim time was a little bit worse. Maybe it wasn't pointing the correct direction entirely. So yeah, but I think, you know, that's probably how it should go. Since the Simavente can only fire head on, the Chaffee can make use of its speed. Especially if you're going armored, you got the immediate V1 on the Chaffee, you got the immediate flanking speed. Let's see how this goes. The uh, flanking speed. Seems into struggling to fire on it. So yeah, with a bit of circle strafing, maybe if I execute that a bit better, the Chaffee can beat the Simvente because it doesn't rotate that fast, especially if you got the uh, flanking speed active. You can get around it. So yeah, I think that's probably fair, but you know, USF are getting a lot of nerfs this patch, so you know, they're really going to feel it in the Chaffee department as well. The Rifleman Vet 1 ability, pour it on them, they call it fire superiority in the patch notes for some reason. But yeah, you can see exactly what it does now in the description, plus 50% to rate of fire, 33% to burst length, massive, massive DPS increase because of that, but then now it's got a 33% speed penalty, on your feet. so we'll activate here. Make it on our way, sir. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely quite noticeable. Trying to chase down a squad, run and gun, looking for squad wipes. It's going to make it uh, quite a lot worse in that area. Which, you know, I think this is good overall because, yeah, it made riflemen just too good. Hold they could kind of trade against elites. Made it very hard to use anti infantry elites against US forces effectively. Because yeah, if the rifle squad could you. stick around in the you engagement wisdom, until pal. this, you know, it was about three quarters through its timer. Around that timing, it would usually start to suppress the enemy, and then, yeah, they could win the fight from then on. So, yeah, and good to see it's had a slight drawback added to all of those bonuses. Rifleman also had the penetration reduced on their bars, which I also think is a pretty good thing overall, because, you know, if you'd, say, gone for, like, a Krautschutzen, when they got double bars, good Where luck keeping they? alive before this. But now, you can actually back away and keep your crowd alive. So the pin nerf to this made a big difference. Time you can actually keep your crud alive. Kind of makes it more appealing to go for these because, you know, between the 4x4 being so strong in the previous patch and bar riflemen, kind of squeezed the crud out. Now I could see the crud seeing a lot more play this patch. The Easy 8 has been nerfed. First off, costs one more command point to unlock it. Germany's Second off, costs more They're manpower and fuel to get out. 50 more manpower, 5 more fuel. And then... Alive. 
If you haven't ticked assault engineers, if you're going for veteran crews instead, it's going to come in with a regular engineer instead of an assault engineer. So, you know, less combat proficient, it's generally a worse squad. So making the veteran crews a bit more punishing in terms of the late game. Oh, also, Easy 8's has pin a massively reduced. But for me, I'm not so sure about these changes. It's certainly going to make it a lot more tolerable in 1v1s. You know, later command point timing, higher cost, more of a drawback for going veteran crews, and less penetration. It's going to make it a lot easier. But I feel like we're not really tackling the issue head on, which is it's a no tech call in allowing you to skip tech. That's what makes the Easy 8 so appealing, at least in 1v1s. And then by making all these nerfs, it makes the tank far less relevant in team games when you know you're going to need the extra penetration to fight against tigers and panthers and stuff. So yeah, not so sure I like the direction this is going, even though overall this is going to benefit me as a 1v1 player. The Whizbang has a new VET1 ability, Long Range Rocket Barrage. 35 munitions, and if you look at the mini map on the left, essentially doubling my barrage range. So that is really powerful now. On top of that, it fires 50% more rockets going from 10 to 15, but a slightly slower rate of fire on it. So close to max range here, we're going to fire off a barrage on an 88 that's been deployed. Let's see how it goes. Ooh, the wayward rocket there. I will say that the rocket travel time seems quite good. Like time between you hearing the rocket and that actually landing seems short so it'll be quite hard to dodge I imagine and from a nice safe distance as well we're the ones scattered so far away I wonder if there's some kind of bug going on because everything else in this tiny area doesn't seem to scatter back and forth much at all that's a little bit strange but yeah good luck if you're trying to use an 88 against somebody with a whiz bang and especially, you know, if it's safe, quite far out the back, it's going to be hard to dive. It's very durable. It's going to be very hard to kill this thing. I can imagine the Wizbang getting a lot of play in team games after this patch. Also in this commander, the P47 strafing runs got nerfed. Essentially, the second plane comes in way slower now. This. This plane comes in. Head like retreat here. So this is far, far less lethal than it used to be. If you've got slow reactions, much easier to dodge. I could maybe see it even requiring a slight cost reduction after this nerf. Onto the Wehrmacht changes, starting out with the 20mm Flak 30 AA gun team, the one you can build from Luftwaffe Company. It's had quite a lot of buffs here. Build time reduced by 5 seconds, crew health increased by 10, penetration increased at all ranges, and a veterancy requirement reduction. Strange choice here. You know, after the last patch, I think this had a manpower cost reduction. It's actually picked up a lot of popularity. Maybe this patch's changes were kind of locked in before it picked up steam in the metagame. But yeah, I don't think this is a good idea overall. Maybe, you know, you could keep the VET requirement reductions and maybe the five second build time, but I would probably revert these two changes. The Stummel upgrade for the 251 has been buffed this patch. First off, 10 Muni is cheaper to get. Then it says auto fire rate of fire improved. It's barrage rate of fire improved, barrage cooldown reduced, I think. So that's quite a lot of buffs. See how it goes now against a uh, Vickers, max range. The barrage. Pretty steady performer. Yeah, just just nice and steady for the timing it comes out it's pretty good you know, I'd say you're pretty much guaranteed to decrew a team weapon if they never dodge away from it but yeah for me this is a little bit confusing of a buff because you know I played with a lot with the Stummel recently if you've seen my FPVs the last you know few weeks I've played a lot of Stummel games uh, my issues with it pathfinding which has largely been addressed this patch already when you try to right click units that are slightly outside of its range, see you're driving straight forwards to get to it, would spin to the side, drive at an angle, then spin to face them, made it really hard to use the Strummel. So now that's been addressed, I expect it will be just way better in general before all these changes. 
and the vet one ability which still hasn't been fixed blinding shot now i'll show you what the issue with this is so we're going to activate blinding shot on the steward you see uh Stummel just gets locked in place facing the direction where you initially activated it. Never fires until the Stuart gets you know out of range and then it'll bug out and try and spin around to face it. Basically only can use this against a, a vehicle driving like straight at you. Even then it's not really guaranteed it might land short or yeah or you know it's just like stationary in front of you a vehicle. What do you need? This is really buggy. So if they fix this Along with the pathfinding, I think that probably would have been enough for me. So I think this is going to be the age of the Stummel for tightrope. I'm going to be shooting up the ladder with the Stummel uh, carrying me all the way. The side skirts upgrade from the Panzer Company. Cost increase, but now gives plus 80 health to all vehicles equipped. That's the P4, Brumbeer, Stug and Werbwind. So yeah, this is much, much better. Previously, you know, giving some extra side armor was almost functionally completely useless because, you know, I thought it brought your side armor up to maybe about 130 on the Panzer IV, but, you know, 130 armor doesn't really help you against just about anything because, yeah, I mean, I think pretty much every medium in the game could still pin you at just about every range on the side with that extra armor. So functionally just about useless, but plus 80 health. Oh boy, that's really good. On the way. 800 on health now. It's going to make the Panzer IV with this upgrade probably the best medium short of the Easy 8, but even that's got quite a few nerfs recently, hasn't it? So yeah, P4 looking really spicy with the extra skirts and yeah, looking pretty suave as well. I could maybe even see them adding this side armor back in just because, yeah, as I said, it's functionally did very little. And you know, you know it feels weird to me to have side skirts but not improve your side armor. Blitzkrieg from Breakthrough Battle Group is having a slight buff to its reload rate but then a speed nerf and a received accuracy nerf as well going from 50% to 35%. I think overall this is probably good because when you get a 50% speed boost in the game it kind of causes a lot of the game's systems to break down like anti-tank guns if you're driving through their arc they can't track you because the vehicle's going so fast with a 50% speed boost or maybe turrets can't rotate quickly enough to track. And yeah, the game systems kind of break down and you can't really counter units moving that quickly. So I think, you know, at least nerfing the speed, probably a good idea. So the command tank from the Breakthrough Battle Group received a bunch of changes. First off, we're going to have a look at its AP mode. So much faster reload and better penetration long range. It's not going to matter too much against the Chaffee, but uh, these two go hit head. This is maybe like a pretty typical unit if you're stalling for, if you're behind. You might go for the command tank if you feel like you can't save for the Tiger, if you're really roughed up, can't afford Panzer Company. And now with the much faster rate of fire, you should be able to bully the Chaffee pretty hard, even if it gets onto your uh, side or rear armor. You know, Chaffee with a slow rate of fire now this patch as well. Pretty comfortable win for the P4 command tank. So we're going to switch over to the high explosive mode now, which also received a huge number of buffs. Let's see how it goes up against a squad out in the open. Okay, so I feel like it used to have, to have a bit more of a slower travel time before this. Looks like it's got a more immediate impact to it now. Faster shell travel time. This unit out in the open though doesn't appear to be that impressive really. The AoE is not really carrying it that hard in this department. Now let's try it against the unit that's clumped up in cover. You can see a big chunk of heaps of models going down per shot when they're more clumped up like that. Much more reliable now and high explosive against clocked up units. Respectable overall. Not an infantry slayer, but you know, pretty cheap honestly at that cost with no tech. So, seems pretty good to me now, the command tech. The Wind received quite a few buffs. First off, 20 manpower cheaper, not a big deal, but 10 fuel cheaper. I don't think this is a particularly good idea. You know, I've played a lot of Wind Rush strategies. And quite often I had a whirlwind on the field at about the 10 minute mark. 
So 10 fuel earlier, you know, maybe another 30 seconds faster. It's going to be extremely oppressive at that timing. It's not really the direction I was hoping the Whirlwind would go. I was hoping the Whirlwind would maybe gain more scaling, become more useful into the late game, rather than pushing it earlier and earlier and earlier. That's not the direction they've been uh, going for. But something I do agree with, they changed the Vet 1 ability. So previously, you'd, you know, you'd buff, you'd activate the ability, and it would, I think, decrease your reload, but it would make your Whirlwind go really slowly, and I think it lasted for like 30-ish seconds, and you couldn't deactivate it. So, you know, you'd activate it, but now you're too slow to chase any infantry, and then you're going really slowly, you can't deactivate it, and you get chased down by the enemy's chaffy, and you lose your whirlwind. So it was pretty much functionally useless, I would say, the Vet 1 ability before this, especially because, you know, they've also buffed the reload in this patch, because the reload doesn't really matter too much for these kind of burst weapons. If we shoot here, now it's reloading, now it's reloading, so the reloading really doesn't matter too much for these kind of weapons, it, you know, with a tank gun, 30% reload is pretty much a 30% DPS increase, but on these kind of burst weapons it is really bad. So I'm very glad that they removed that Vet 1 ability and what they've got in its place now is white phosphorus. Now the description here is bugged, doesn't change the speed but it does give a minus to vision range of any vehicles. I think largely you're not really going to be using this to target any vehicles if I'm honest. What we're going to be targeting is uh, infantry. So let's see how we go here. How fast is it suppress? Pretty fast. Looks a little bit strange effects wise. Not like insanely strong in terms of uh, time to pin, but decent time to suppress actually. And it'll keep the squad down for a long time. Is that a 30 second activation is it? Pretty good. So yeah, I could imagine this patch, with this arriving so much earlier now, you know, 10 fuel, 30, 40 seconds earlier, on top of this ability, which is going to, you know, keep handout anti-tank weapons suppressed, yeah, I could see this being uh, a bit of a problem, and yeah, it doesn't really address the issue that I had with the whirlwind was its late game scaling, I don't know, uh, I wish we had vet description bonuses so we could see what changes down here, but Feels to me, Whirlwind doesn't really scale too well into the late game. That's where I was hoping they would adjust it. The Kit and Krug communication cable upgrade, getting a change here, going down in costs. Down to 25 means you can get it immediately at the start of the match again. But it no longer gives bonus resources from points that the Kitten captures. Instead, now you have plus seven vision, you know, around the flag on those points. And also a uh, capture and decapture rate bonus on the kitten when it's got this. On top of that, the kitten got a speed boost. I feel like it's so fast now that... I don't know, it just doesn't look that fast. It kind of looks a little bit stuttery in its movement to me or something, I don't know. But 11-ish top speed is incredibly fast. It's going to make it very difficult to chase it down with, like the 4x4 now, after it also got its... Uh, rate of fire nerfed so we'll have a bit of a capture rate uh, race here just to show how good the cables are we'll get these guys i think the apios don't have any capture rate bonus the kitten does who's gonna win the race <laughs> oh boy it's gonna be an old-fashioned stomping We'll hear when it captures and we'll see what the progress is. It's, it's literally twice as fast as a normal unit. A pioneer. That is nutty. Let's have a look at the vision it gives now. Around the flag. Ooh, that's a lot of vision. The entire circle. Completely illuminated. And maybe like two range beyond it. That is... That is a lot. 
You won't be able to hide around here. I'm One thing that kind of emerged up. after the last patch was the recon scan. This ability, I think, too strong at the moment. I think uh, when you activate it, maybe the kitten should have to be completely stationary. A 50% speed penalty just doesn't matter too much to the kitten because it's not like an acceleration change. So it still gets up to speed at a normal rate and its top speed is so fast that it's pretty quick moving around in this mode. So yeah, I'd like to see it maybe changed. You have this activated, you have to be stationary or maybe like minus 90% speed or maybe add a acceleration penalty to it as well because yeah i think at the moment this is too good the eight rod has a new ability commander mode so you, you disable your weapons but in exchange for that you get plus 50 percent vision range and units in an aura gain 30 percent reload and 40 percent accuracy it applies to team weapons and vehicles so activate it here got two team weapons next to me you see an enemy tank See what that reload bonus does. Pretty good. I could imagine, especially as the packs start to like vet up, that could be nasty. And with plus forty percent accuracy, Hot you're here. not gonna miss uh, like almost at all. You're pretty much well, yeah. I get some medium. I think you're guaranteed to any range at that stage. But even against the light vehicles, your packs are gonna be pretty much pinpoint accurate. So I could imagine this combination, you know, the 8 rod spotting for double packs to be a very strong composition. The Nebelwerfer, the most important change to it is actually a bug fix such that damage over time now counts towards its veterancy. So previously one of the big changes or big issues with the Nebelwerfer is it would get some vet on impact but the flame damage left behind wouldn't actually count for any veterancy so it would be extremely slow to vet. But look at it go now. You see, you know, as the flame ticks go, nearly, you know, obviously I had a huge amount of units in the area, but you nearly vet one after that one barrage. Also, they changed the uh, white phosphorus. Added one extra rocket to it, and that will also gain vet with damage over time. Roughly pretty similar spacing on my weapons here. Let's see how that compares to the regular barrage. 40 munitions on this, by the way. So, unlike Code 2, White Phosphorus can kill here. Oh, did you see that? Oh, I must have gone for the moonshot. But yeah, I mean, look at this. This... Gained, you know, about from VET 1 to VET 2. But this gained from VET 0 to almost the same point. So I think this is maybe a bit of an issue with the white phosphorus in general. There's so much overlap with the regular barrage. It doesn't really have its chance to shine. So I don't really know. Like, you know, sure, it blocks some vision and stuff and lingers on the ground. But so does the flames linger on the ground. It doesn't have enough breathing room or differentiating space between the regular barrage and the Phosphorus Barrage. The Panther has a new VET 1 ability called Tank Hunter. Works kind of similar to Hammer Tracking that the British had in Code 2. Basically anything you shoot at is going to be marked for 8 seconds. You're going to see them in the Fog of War and I guess they're going to have a received accuracy penalty of 25%. So let's see how this goes. Uh, turn Fog of War on. Uh oh. Uh oh. That didn't work. Back away. That's that's not giving me sight for enough seconds. One. Yeah, that's that's not working properly at all. One, two, three. Yeah, that's 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 not working. <laughs> So the vision aspect of this is not working at the moment, which does kind of limit the received accuracy penalty part of it as well. You're not going to be able to see it, you're not going to be able to shoot at it, so yeah, they need to fix that bug. The red phosphorus grenade has now been fixed, it does damage over time as it should have all along. And if you've seen my video about grenades, you'll know that the amount of smoke, the area of smoke it gives, is actually bigger than the Willy Pete that the US Forces Commanders have. So let's see 
the uh, area this is actually going to deal damage. It can do friendly fire damage. So I'm going to run into the area. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so that is a big area. No route toots clearing a path. We'll you find name a way. It. We'll catch it. Moving to new destination. See if that gets everything. Right there. Red phosphorus. Smoke Scouts, out that loaded position. and ready. Yep. Ah, Heading to new ah, ah, We hold it up. Yeah, I mean that's like six-ish range. We have lost communication with one of That covers a huge area that red phosphorus. Like a full circle, like all the way around here basically. Huge area covered by that phosphorus grenade. Even though, you know, like visually it looks a lot smaller. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider coming on board as a Patreon backer like all of these legends here.